Hello, I hope you're doing well. Uh, my name is Anders, I am a 3D freelance. I made this uh, Tensegrity animation and I wanted to show you how to make it in 3D Studio Max and Typhlo. Let's use uh, splines to model this. I'm using the sweep modifier to quickly get some polygons out in the scene. Well, let's use the handgun. I often end up using splines as a base for simpler model things like this. Because it's so quick to just bang out the spline and then use the sweep modifier. And we will rotate the upper part like this. Here we have the simple model and then we'll create a Typhlo object. Just place it over here and open the editor. We will use these two objects uh, as the model for the simulation. So uh, let's use both objects and we'll add the selected ones. And now we can hide everything except the Tie flow because it's uh, displaying the geometry that we have imported. Let's create a physics shape and use the convex hull. Now we'll see that since these objects are concave, they're intersecting right now, even though it looks like they're not, because these objects are concave and uh, physics can only use the convex hull. So if we display the hull now, we can see that they are intersecting and therefore like bouncing off each other. That's just an integral part of the way physics works, so we have to work around that. And we can use phase fracture or we can use element uh, fracture. But these objects are not, we need to uh, separate them into more elements. and detach this one to the element. So now we have one, two, three, four, five convex elements instead of uh, one concave element. And I'll do the same for this one. There is probably some better way to do this, but eh. So you can see that these elements are separated so and inside the tie flow here we have uh, the element fracture so let's show the tie flow object so now you can see that all the elements are behaving like we expect them to i'll clean it up a bit there nice and uh, these uh, objects are intersecting with the ground plane so i'll move the lines, the objects a bit further up. Cheers. Nice. Next part is to bind our uh, ob physics objects together with the physics bind. And now we need to use the rigid, use the rigid joint and uh, let's say 5 million. Now it sounds a lot, but that's what it takes. The joint is really uh, like a joint that uh, needs to flex, but uh, since we're using high spring values on swing and uh, twist settings here, it's basically a glue. I see that my main settings are set to frame instead of uh, uh, quarter frame or eighth frame, set it at uh, one fourth. And in the physics tab here, I set the subsets to 12 and the velocity iterations to 12 as well. Now we have a much more realistic movement. So my objects are hidden here, but I can still select them and move them. Move them. So if I were to like try this, it behaves like expected. That's cool. Now when I first learned tie flow, I didn't understand that uh, you can have several events in the same tie flow. So I tried to make several tie flows and. Uh, I didn't understand that I can just make another birth operator here and it will interact with the other event. So that's a pretty basic thing, but uh, there you go. 
Now we'll create the, let's call them wires or strings, strings that connect uh, these two objects together. I won't try to explain how a uh, tensegrity sculpture works, but it's basically, oh yeah, I am trying to explain it. Uh, it's basically hanging by this middle thread here in the middle. And then it's stabilized by these two longer st strings. Uh, so this one is hanging and this one is uh, being tensioned by the weight of this uh, that's trying to move in the other side direction. Enough of that. Let's uh, pick the spline as a birth spline in a new event. So you can say it spawns a lot of par particles along the spline, but we need to use uh, distance along spline because we want an even number. Let's say five millimeters because we're using the standard measurements. Oh, it looks like my splines are not the uh, corners. There we go, an even distribution. Like so. And then use, let's use uh, the shape operator here to spawn lots of 3D cubes along the spline. And let's add a physics shape to this shape so that the, the physics solver calculates. Looks like this. Let's hide the line for now. So these cubes are going to act as bones for our wires, our strings. So these are the splines that we use to spawn the, <coughs> the shapes. Let's make a copy of that. And let's add a sweep modifier to that. Before that, let's add a normalize spline. So that we get uh, segments. This looks animatable. So what I'll do is I'll on this uh, mesh I'll make a tie particle skin and select this uh, tie flow. It looks like crap now because we haven't bound the strings to anything, but uh, the geometry is deformed by the particles in this event here. Set a particle group here, just to make sure. And select the export groups and use only the export groups for the particles. You see there is something changing, so that's good. Now only these boxes drive the animation of this geometry. Physics bind. Let's use the joint again. Let's use the default values and see what happens. See here when we get along the animation that it's not uh, balanced. Why could that be? It should be hanging further in here, I think. That's basically it, really. Let's put a mesh operator here so that uh, we can render our little. Uh, Tensegrity sculpture, but it uh, works as expected. Let's try a force on this and see what happens uh, if it falls, just to check that the uh, wires behave naturally, because uh, I don't really know what uh, a swing setting of uh, 7500 really means, so let's uh, uncheck damping and see how it looks. A bit jiggly, perhaps. Uh, 
and here is a version that I prepared earlier with uh, F Storm as a renderer. It's really nothing, is no special settings really, but uh, kind of a cool look. I think so. So TieFlow is free, uh, and uh, if you're a student, you can download uh, 3ds Max as a student and uh, learn how to use it. Uh, so I encourage everyone to try Typhlo because it's saved 3ds Max. Uh, this is, uh, I think, this is the best particle sim that I've used. I know Houdini is very advanced, but uh, this is so easy to learn and to uh, find examples of uh, uh, specific scenarios. So I really recommend anyone who's into animation and, and motion graphics to check out Typhlo. Uh, I'm using uh, F-Storm to render my uh, project, but. Uh, works with uh, many renderers, of course. So come to the TyFlow Facebook group and check out some of the other amazing things that people use uh, TyFlow for. Cheers!